So I've said this before here on the channel and I'll say it again right here. The clone technology has gotten so much better just within the past couple of years alone. You know, I can remember when I was first getting into collecting and, and I got to a point where I started exploring some clones because I couldn't afford to get the originals of whatever it was, usually expensive niche fragrances or even high-end designers. And sometimes I would find a good one, other times I would find one that maybe just had some issues. It kind of fell apart either in the opening or the dry down. Maybe the quality was just significantly worse. Maybe it only lasted for four hours versus the original lasting 10, right? There just seemed to be a lot more issues. And don't get me wrong, there are still some clone releases that are not good that are being put out nowadays but we're really starting to get it narrowed down and there are some really impressive ones that have been put out within the past few years that I wanna to cover today. So whatever your goal is, if you're trying to save money, if you're trying to uh, sample a certain type of DNA first and instead of just buying a decant of that, you just wanna go for a clone, that way you have a, you know 100 milliliters of it to wear and you can really test it or whatever it may be, uh, these 12 clones here are so close that they could almost pass for the original what they're trying to clone here. So these are incredibly accurate. I mean, they're about as close as you can possibly get. And for a lot of these, when you're talking about the differences, you're getting to the point where you're starting to split hairs and uh, it's really hard to differentiate it sometimes. Even the performance on a lot of these hold up as well. So, I mean, we're, we're talking about some impressive stuff here. So I will link these down below uh, so you can pick these up. A lot of these are gonna be very affordable, you know, anywhere from 30, 40, 50 dollars, whereas the originals that we're gonna be talking about that these are clones of are in the multiple hundreds. Some of these can be a little bit hard to pick up at times. Oftentimes they go out of stock because they're in high demand and so if you check my community tab on a daily basis and you get subscribed anytime something exclusive or rare or hard to find comes into stock I post about it I also have a mailing list so you can get those uh, notifications via email so you don't miss out a lot of these when they do come into stock they sell pretty quickly let's get things kicked off with Rue Broca Touche so uh, cool little bottle here Rue Broca which I do believe is uh, another brand, like it's kind of like uh, an offspring of another clone brand from my understanding. I can't remember which one it was. I read this somewhere, uh, but I don't know. You can let me know down below. You can fact check that. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. Now, regardless, I guess it doesn't matter that much, right? Uh, what does matter is what this is a clone of, and this is a clone of Ultramail by John Paul Gaultier. Now, there's another really good one out there called Afnon 9 p.m. Gets very close. The only difference with that, and one of my main only problems with that one, is it didn't have the actual pear note. It has apple and a lot of sweetness, so you do get that fruity sweet opening, but this one, to me, actually has a much more photorealistic pear opening, which combining with the rest of the DNA, almost gives you a closer ultra male interpretation off the top. Now with the Afnon, when you get into the dry down, it's still very similar to ultra male. And really you, could, you can't go wrong with either of them, but in terms of getting as close as you possibly can, down to the point where it can be a little bit hard to tell the difference between the two, Touche, Eau de Parfum probably wins that one. Next up, another clone that really has impressed me a ton. You know, I got this one in with decent expectations. This one actually was a little bit more expensive. I believe 59, maybe $60. Now, what this is a clone of is, is uh, right around almost $300 on discount or sometimes on sale for a bit less than that, uh, just kind of depending on what's going on. Uh, but it's Barouge Perlador, and this is a clone of Parfums de Marley Carlisle. So maybe 300 is a little bit steep now that I'm thinking about it. Maybe maybe 250 on discount or sometimes 260. I don't know, somewhere around in there. The point is this one is still significantly more affordable. And it's very, very similar to Carlisle to the point where it is almost shocking and uh, a little bit concerning. Um, maybe not concerning, but kind of crazy. And this is coming from someone who has purchased Parfums de Marley Carlisle, and I've bought all of my Parfums de Marley fragrances. Contrary to popular belief, uh, I talk about them highly because I like a good majority of them, and people just assume maybe I got them for free, but I actually did purchase them. And so, you know, I spent a good chunk of money on Parfums de Marley, and I have a really good couple of Parfums de Marley clones. This being one of them, and something like Detour Noir for Layton, also incredibly close. So it's kind of crazy. If you're on a budget and you don't care about having the name brand and the premium 
presentation, which to be fair, this has really good presentation as well. I, you can save so much money and just go for something like this. Very impressive. Now, this next one is a clone of a very expensive scent. Uh, probably in terms of, of what the original is, it's the most expensive one in this video. So we have Al Haramain Amber Oud Ruby Edition. Take a good look at that color and the gold accenting. This is a clone of Baccarat Rouge 540 Extrait. What's the difference? Well, the Extrait has almond and this has almond. Uh, Al Harmain has another clone as well, a BR540, but that one geared is more towards the EDP because it doesn't have the almond in there. Essentially, the almond gives it a little bit more substance, a little bit more base, and uh, it makes it a little bit easier to pick up on. And yeah, like I said, uh, BR540, EDP is already very expensive even at discounters and the Extrait is even more so. It's to the point where it's almost insane. I do have a bottle of it. I prefer the Extrait, but it is hard on the wallet. So if you are on a budget or you just are, you know, someone who doesn't have just money to completely throw away, just go for this, seriously. This works so well and it almost eliminates the need to actually get 540 in either concentration. Okay, so we'll go with a Tom Ford clone up next. So this one is actually gonna be a clone of, at one point, a, a private blend, but now it's been brought over to the signature line. And so this is uh, Afnan's Rare Carbon and it is a clone of ombre leather. So, you know, some of these clone bottles, presentations and names kind of allude to what it's a clone of. This one, not at all. Rare carbon, the bottle is nowhere near black like ombre leather, you know, it just doesn't look anything like ombre leather, doesn't sound like it. The notes do, but the name, the bottle doesn't. So this one could be a little bit misleading. I glossed over this one a lot uh, on discounters and that sort of thing because I saw rare carbon and I gotta say, immediately I thought of a blue fragrance, Prada Lunarosa Carbon Sauvage. You know, you just kind of think of a metallic type of smell and I was completely wrong with that assumption. So if you want ombre leather on a budget, 35, $37, somewhere around in there, this is a great one to go for. You know, there's also Latafa, Amber and leather, that one's like 14 bucks. It's also really good, especially for that price. You're talking about dirt cheap price at that point. But this one does have a little bit more quality, a little bit more substance overall, and it's probably gonna be a bit closer. Next up, we have Amir Fire Your Desire. So I picked this one up because it is a clone of Killian's Angel's Share. And um, there's also another clone of that one out there called Latafa Kamra. However, that one has generated a ton of hype and it's one of those deals where when it comes into stock, it sells out usually within a day. Sometimes I've seen it sell out within a couple hours after restocking. So that one really can be a bit hard to pick up. This one is consistently a little bit easier to get, although probably will start to sell out now if the word gets out, but it's another really good alternative. Honestly, if you could get either one, you would be better off just picking one of them up. Now, when it comes down to it, I do think Kamra differentiates a little bit from Angel's Share. Uh, I think this one's closer overall. However, I don't think you can go wrong with either of them. So just pick one up if you can, because they're really, really good for the price. This next one is so crazy because it's $22. And the fragrance that it is cloning is on discounters like 140. I think it retails for 160, 165 for 60 ml. 100 ml is like 210 retail. And we're talking a designer scent. Let that sink in, that's crazy. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Latafa Assad, and this is a clone of Dior Sauvage Elixir. So I gotta say with this one, going into it, I wasn't expecting much of anything. I really wasn't. Because again, I paid the $22 for it. And, you know, not for nothing, the presentation is fine. But sometimes it can just look a little bit cheap, a little bit tacky, right? Some of these clone presentations, they, you know, it's nothing like Sauvage Elixir, nowhere near as classy, right? And Sauvage Elixir is a very classy scent. So I was like, yeah, we'll see about this. You know, I wasn't expecting to think much of it. I got this in, I started wearing it, and I'm like, okay, like this is just crazy like it is so impressive for the price i mean it's a cheapy price and it gets you so close to elixir that it's almost not even funny so it does have that licorice sandalwood uh, nutmeg cinnamon essentially very warm spicy woody smell that elixir has i mean it's about as close as you can possibly get and i don't see really any other need for any other sauvage elixir clone out there i'm sure many more are going to come 
but I can't see him getting any better than this. We'll have to see. I could be wrong. I could be eating those words in a few months or a few years, but I just think this stuff here is about as good as it can get. Next up, Afnan Tarathi Brown. This is a clone of YSL Tuxedo and or Mustache Eau de Parfum if you want to go down the cloneception route. You know, it does have bits and pieces of mustache and it has bits and pieces of tuxedo because there are variances, right? Tuxedo to mustache, there's differences being that mustache has a little bit more focus on vanilla. This one's got a little bit more focus on vanilla, but it also still ties back to the heavy use of patchouli and ambrox and ambergris like in tuxedo. So kind of like a mix between those two, but still very close to the originator, which is tuxedo. And that one is very expensive. You know, it's one that you can't get discounted. You got to pay full retail for it. This is 40 to $50 online. Next up, we have Paris Corner Sidrat Essence. So this is a clone of Sidrat Boise by Mancera, the Eau de Parfum. And you know, that one isn't all that expensive on discounters. A lot of times you can get it for $80, sometimes testers in the mid $70 range, which is crazy for a niche scent. And that does come with a cap. So you might think, why do you need a clone for that? Well, you know, this one is $29, $28, $30. You're still saving money here. And if you are saving money, then this could be a direction that you can go for. If you're trying to be conscious of your spending, you could get a couple other fragrances for the price of one, essentially. So it's a great way to go. Uh, another way is if you have a bottle of Sidrat Boise and say, you know, your son or, or your friend or, or someone around you likes how it smells, they love it, and you want to give them something that smells similar, but you don't want to spend the money, you could just give them this. I mean, why not, right? Especially if it's your son and he's younger, he doesn't need to be wearing a niche scent to school. He could wear this and smell great and it'd smell like his dad for a fraction of the cost. You know, there's so many uses for these clones and people downplay them, but really just get creative with it. You might find a lot of uses for this. Okay, up next, Jimmy Choo Man Ice. So this one's a clone of Dior Homme Cologne, which is all about the citrus and musk, essentially. Very summery, very bright, very refreshing, very uplifting. I love it, it's one of my favorites. Uh, the problem is you're spending around $100 even at discounters and the performance of the Dior is not all that great. Now to be fair, the Jimmy Choo is no beast either, but this one's $30, the Dior, $100. So I've always said, you know, don't buy that expecting a good performance, you're just gonna get let down. Buy it because you like the quality, you like the brand, and more importantly, you just like the scent. And for me, I love the scent. It's a nostalgic fragrance for me. And so I'm fine with the lack of performance and spending the money on it. But if you just don't want that, you don't wanna spend a bunch of money and get a product that isn't gonna perform like you want it to, well, you know, this isn't going to perform much better, but it's very close. You could spray it on heavier. It's much more affordable. Throw it in your gym bag, throw it in your vehicle. If it gets ruined or broken, it's not the end of the world. It's a very refreshing scent DNA that I do think everyone should have at least some form of this DNA in their collection because it is so versatile. Now, this next one impressed me as well. Going into it, wasn't expecting a ton because there haven't really been any clones of this particular scent up until this one that I've discovered. And so I didn't think they were gonna do a good job at it. Not sure why I thought that, I just didn't. I'm kind of a, a snob for this next fragrance, but it's Latafa Socrat, okay? And it's Eau de Parfum, and it is a clone of Aqua de Jo Profumo. Plenty of Aqua de Jo clones out there. We've got some things that smell like Profondo and Absolute itself is kind of inspired by some other designers. So, you know, the line itself is pretty accessible among other brands and, and clones and that sort of thing. But Profumo never really had anything that tried to replicate it, but this one does it really well. You get the patchouli, you get the incense. It actually has that grassy green opening that Profumo has, and then it has that smoky kind of mysterious dry down to where even when you pull the cap off this thing, you could tell it's Profumo. So to me, that is very impressive. Like I said, Profumo is one of my all-time favorite designers. I've got over 10 bottles of it at this point. I love the stuff. I know the stuff like the back of my hand. And this one gets my stamp of approval. So if you're after Profumo for a steep discount, go for this one, you won't regret it. Bentley for Men Absolute. Around $30, $35 on discounters, great price. Very masculine scent with cedarwood, pink pepper, papyrus. And this is a clone of Gucci Pour Homme, the original. Gucci Pour Homme 1 with the brown juice, you know, in the, in the Gucci Pour Homme bottle. 
and uh, you know, same note breakdown pretty much. It's all about the woods, dry woods, pencil shavings almost, right? Very masculine. This is a much more traditional scent for a dude who wants something that smells like a dude. You don't want anything that's overly sweet and that sort of thing. And you don't want to spend the money on the Gucci, which again has been discontinued for some time now and it's getting more rare as time goes on. This is going to be as close as you can get to that for a fraction of the price. And a lot of people probably pick this up and have no idea that it's inspired by the Gucci to a heavy extent. And that's fine. And you don't necessarily need to worry about that. This is great on its own, but do know where it did come from. You know, they were pulling heavily from that, that inspiration there when Tom Ford was creatively directing Gucci scents. And so that's, you know, where this DNA originated from. And it is impressively good, especially at this price point. You got to have this stuff. Now, this last one is like $15, 15, 20, uh, 100 mil. Very affordable. It's from another well respected clone brand. It's Latafa Hayati, something like that. Hayati. And uh, this is a clone of Rasasi Havas. Now, the notes are a little bit different. Uh, I don't think there's plum officially listed in here, and there's some other variances, but you do get apple, ambroxan, citrus, kind of an aquatic note overall. It's still very much that DNA, which essentially is the Invictus Aqua DNA, although the Rasasi did come first. So, you know, essentially this is a clone of the Rasasi. Um, this is kind of how I look at it, or Invictus Aqua, whichever way you prefer. It does have a little bit of a cinnamon spiciness in here, which also kind of does relate over to a little bit of a spiciness that you get from the original DNA as well. Uh, ultimately, though, it is very close at a fraction of the price. The Rasasi can be anywhere from $50 to $70, sometimes $40. It's all over the place. The Invictus Aquas are discontinued and you can't get them anymore, really. So this is a nice, affordable option. Alrighty guys, that's going to do it for me. 12 fragrance clones that can almost pass for the original because these are so close. If you're looking for accuracy, if you're looking for some must own clones on a budget, I highly recommend you check these out. Links will be down below. That's going to do it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.